Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the first night of the alternative tour here in Birmingham, England. And it appears that Shinsuke Nakamura is already in the ring and he's pissed. Calling out Chris Jericho. Straight to the point, he's begging for a fight with a champion. Oh, and speaking of the devil. Where is he? No. He did underestimate him, and he lost. He is right, Pete Dunne has undergone a significant change. The arrogance of this prick is coming to a forefront and you can see in the eyes of Nakamura that he's spoiling for a fight. Pacing back and forth and he won't have to wait any longer because our first match of the evening is some Group A action in the Survival Series Tournament. And here is the newly rejoined member of the Undisputed Era, the Messiah of the Backbreaker, Roderick Strong. Many of you may be wondering why Roderick is by himself, and that is because Mr. McMahon has informed Strong that the other members of the faction, Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish, have been banned from ringside, and if anyone gets involved, Strong will not only be disqualified, but he will lose three points, and those points will be awarded to his opponent. Unlike last week against Pete Dunne, this match will be fair. But what is not fair is cyberbullying of any kind. As you can see, Shinsuke is donning the t-shirt of a light gone too soon. Continue to rest in power, Hannah Kimura, as a community as a community we must continue to stand strong and stand together but the look in the in the eyes of the former wwe champion he is mm, he will make sure that roderick doesn't stand for long because after being assaulted by the returning jake hager and chris jericho last week he's out to break some bones and to deliver some king shasas you know the whole ordeal but the only thing that is left to be said, ladies and gentlemen, is let us begin. And there's the bell, and here we go. As the winner of this match will raise their stock in the tournament with both Strong and Nakamura tied at five points apiece. And Nakamura done playing games already out of the gate. He is done playing around. He is pissed off. He is ready for a fight as he, oh, kick to the midsection, kick again, and another kick, and a chop has him down to his knees. Nakamura unleashing his fury over at the expense of Roderick Strong. The red fish on the count of three, breaking the hole. Oh, oh, forearm knocks him down. Look in the eyes. Look into the eyes of this man. He was forced to relinquish the WWE Championship due to injury, and tonight, Roddy is a lamb in the eyes of a bull. Sends him into the corner. Oh, and a knee to the midsection. Has him tumbling to his back. Oh, and he's down. Nakamura ain't playing around one bit. Oh, what a stiff kick to the midsection. Oh. Went for the forearm, but blocked. Roddy not going down without a fight. Back elbow. Roddy off the ropes. Oh, and a leaping lariat. Looking to put this one away to gain five points right out the back. Only on one count. Roddy returned to the Undisputed Era with the exile of Mike Kanellis. And he used his newly acquired resources to his advantage. But if he tries for the rest of this tournament, he is not only DQ'd, but he loses three points each time. Oh, what a leaping knee. And now he got him with a wrist lock. Oh, and a belly to back suplex. 
This man is a former United States champion, and he is holding his own against the former WWE champion who was forced to relinquish the title due to the knee injury. And Roddy with a drop kick. Somewhere Adam Cole has to be impressed with Roddy. He's holding his own against the King of Strong Style. Send him crashing into the barricade. And if it's up the count of three, both men does not want to get double counted out because if they do, they will both lose three points. And another belly. Ooh, it looked like he landed on the back of his neck and he, as Nakamura clutches the neck. Kick to the midsection. What is he going for right here? Oh, and he plants him. What does he got going on right here? Ducks out of the way. Oh, what a leaping knee. What a leaping knee. Nakamura is out like a light. Here's the cover. Two. Look at the game. Five points here. No, only a two. Still to come here tonight, the Survival Series Tournament continues with Chris Jericho he, as he will go one-on-one -on -one with the bitter Pete Dunne in our main event. And Roman Reigns returns to provide a medical update on his uncle Rikishi after his fall at ground zero as Roddy zeroes in on the face of Nakamura with that knee drop. And now what is he going for here? Oh, as he clutches the wrist, it looks like he's going for a deadlift into the gut rich slam. Roddy to the top, has Nakamura dead in his sights, oh and a leaping knee drop from the top rope. He's ready to put this one away, but Nakamura had him well scouted, oh and a knee, a knee to the midsection, oh and a kick to the face. And now he has him in his clutches with a German suplex. And again, Nakamura is not playing around one bit. He wanted Chris Jericho and Roddy is the lamb for the slaughter. Oh, what a shot. Oh, and Nakamura tapping into that zone with a reverse power slam. He is feeling it. This crowd is feeling it. What a way to kick us off here tonight for the alternative tour. He is feeling it. He wants those five points. And a King Shasta is a guarantee. But he's not going for the pin. I'm guessing he wants to send a message to not only Le Champion, Chris Jericho, but he wants to send a message to the entire tournament. And another King Shasta with that knee brace as added leverage. He has to wear that knee brace as precaution because his leg was crushed by Rusev and the Rebellion. But what is about to be crushed right now is Roddy's hopes and dreams of leaving this night with a victory as Nakamura, Nakamura with a third King Shasa. Here's one, here's two, and Nakamura has gained five points in the Survival Series Tournament in dominant fashion. What a win. He started off furious with wanting to fight Chris Jericho. And I doubt this quelled that fury. But you can't take anything away from Roderick Strong. He tried. But it was the anger and passion of Shinsuke Nakamura that drove him to hit three King Shasas to pick up the win. And now the King of Strong Style ties with Le Champion. And he is laser focused on reclaiming the title he never lost. But ladies and gentlemen, someone took out world television champion Tommaso Ciampa in the parking lot. He has been deemed medically disqualified from competition. And Mr. McMahon has hired an investigator to look into this incident before he does what he, we already suspect. And that it was the work of the rebellion. But the chairman wants to make sure he's gotten his facts straight. We are awaiting the arrival as we speak. And speaking of the rebellion... Here comes the man who at one point was running rough shot all over the WWE with a baseball bat. And, to, and now he sits 
at the top as the WWE Champion, Rusev is here, but I have no idea why, as he is not on my rundown sheet. But that is a reoccurring theme with this group. They do what they want and however they want, all in the name of bucking the system, or as they like to say, F the status quo. Along with World Heavyweight Champion Big E Langston, both of these men are awaiting their respective challengers for their titles. But there is so many questions surrounding the remaining members of the Rebellion as we have no idea who their fourth man will be at Survival Series in the Elimination Tag against Team WWE. But don't mistake my tone as this missing the accomplishment of Rusev, multi-time US Champion, IC Champion, holder of the Money in the Bank briefcase, current WWE Champion. It's just this new found attitude that I personally don't agree with with the sold out crowd here in Birmingham. They're t torn in between, but they somewhat agree with me. He still believes that this tournament is a sham, but I for one believe it is a great opportunity for those who wouldn't get it. That's what they think. They stood up to the system and tormented us for the past couple of months. He's already looking past anyone in the tournament which may or may not come back to bite him. Rusev is confident that he will overcome whoever gains the most points in group A and he will introduce them to the pit his version of the rock bottom and wait what's going on wait a minute who's that on the ramp who who is that oh Samoa Joe is here if you remember he has a gripe with the WWE champion as he was the one Rusev cashed in on back in Philly at WWE ground zero we haven't seen the Samoa submission machine ever since that night and he looks healthy and pissed. Oh, and that's my proof as he unleashes on the WWE Champion with that Samoan Blitz, sending the champion scrambling to the floor. Wait, what? Joe wants his rematch for the WWE Championship and he's given the champion two weeks to prepare because unlike him, he will not catch him off guard. He will let the notion sit in his head that he is coming for that title and he will make him fight to keep it. Samoa Joe is looking to reclaim the WWE Championship and this man has come to collect some more points in the Survival Series. It's Rush Hour. This is Leo Rush. Shocking the world with his return as the final participant revealed for this tournament. I stated that he has the love and respect of the fans, but once that bell rings, he tunes everyone out and focuses on the prize, and he will do whatever it takes to make sure he leaves with that dub. If you're tuning in for the first time, the rules of the tournament are simple. Pinfalls are worth 5 points. Submissions are worth 10 points. In case of a countout or disqualification victory, the victor gains 3 points. But if they let the match go to a double draw, then both competitors will lose 3 points from their total score. Leo sits at 5 points after whipping out the Dragon's Claws Frog Splash on Kofi Kingston during week 1 of the tournament. And tonight, he has to either gain a pinfall or submission over his opponent to gain the lead in this tournament. But his opponent has the slight size advantage and he is the self-proclaimed globally elite Apollo Crews. Earlier today, as Cruz and Dana Brooke made their way to the ring, we had some cameras catch up with the duo and get their thoughts heading into this match. Uh, 
again mention of this private investigator or investor that has been funding this resurgence if you want to call it that of apollo cruz and apparently he's not pleased or he or she is not pleased with the lack of booking and wins well he made the mistake last week of showing off when he should be focusing on the match if he wants to not have a repeat of last week against seth rollins he has to focus especially when he's in the ring with someone the caliber of the man of the hour let me know down in the chats or in the comments who you see walking away with the dub here we go both men have that cocky and arrogant personality as both men show off for the other who will strike first oh that would be leo is he going is he going to try to power up this is my this is my point he has the disadvantage as apollo is the bigger man oh what a leaping lariat and apollo with that beautiful kip up he has to keep his showboat in check if he wants to impress this private inv investor. Oh, what's he going for here? Oh, he has a mummy. He plants him. Rush is in serious trouble early on, and it looks like Leo is a little bit more focused this week, which is smart strategy as he has to, if he wants to become the world's heavyweight champion. Oh, what a form as he has him rocked in the, uh, against the ropes and now Leo what is he going for here oh and he hangs him up we're gonna put this one away early as as he toss around Leo only a one follow you have to stay on him you have to stay on him if you want that goes for both of them you can't let either man let up because these both credible athletes will not go down without a fight oh what a kick to the face and rush oh roll up no kip up into the kick to the side of the face i told you rush oh what a disrespectful slap i told you once that bell ring leo doesn't care who's listening to him or who's doing whatever the case he wants that dub he wants that fight as the snap mare take down and they kick to the spine that has my spine a little tingling a little bit i can't take it myself kick to the back oh Roll up again, kip up, into the kick to the side of the face once again. Is he going for the Dragon's Claw early on right here? Looking to get that five points. Oh, no, wait. Apollo rolled out of the way quickly as he snaps him up into the rolling cutter. Apollo has Leo right where he wants him. Sends him into the corner. Presses him to the top. Oh, what a shot. Oh, this is only going to hurt both men. Superplex. A superplex. I have both men feeling the effects. But Rush in trouble looking to put the loose right here too. And no, only a two count. He was close to getting the five points, but he's going to do a lot more. Oh, what a net breaker. Rushes into the corner. Oh, Apollo has him nowhere to go. Three, four. Those repeated close fist shots. The official got to step in at some point to get him off. Oh. The arrogance came back to haunt him against Seth Rollins, but tonight is different for Cruz. The threat of this private investi investor pulling out from their deal has him on his toes. And speaking of on his toes, oh, he took Leo off his with that wrist lock suplex. Oh, okay, kick to the midsection. Leo's in serious trouble right here. Oh, what a power bump, but he maintains his grip. No, oh, and another one. Going for the third one. Oh, and he plants him. Apollo, this sold out crowd is not pleased with this arrogant prick, but they're going to have to learn to like it. Oh, Leo with a kick, trying to stay in this fight. Oh, what a net breaker. I was wondering when Dana 
When the wicked witch would cast her spell as Dana grabbed the attention of Leo and is about to come back to haunt bite him in the ass with that le Russian leg sweep as Cruz catches him. The sold out crowd here in Birmingham not pleased with this talented prick. Yes, I did call Dana Brooke the wicked witch. It is what it is. But what isn't, this is not going to hurt as with the Death Valley driver. Cruz looking to put this one away right here. Two. Leo's foot is on the rope, but oh, wait. Okay, Cruz got him up because that would have not gone well. That would have been a gripe for Leo as his foot was on the rope, but the official was not paying attention. Oh, as Apollo knocks him out with that forearm. And again. Leo was playing around at this point. Now, excuse me, Apollo. And that proves my point. As he's going for the big splash in the corner. No, Leo quickly got out of the way. And so the float over, DDT. Leo trying to stay, somehow get in, back into this fight. Oh, what a forearm to the face. Leo, oh, and another slap. He is fighting. Oh, what a head scissors takedown. What a head scissors takedown as Leo fighting through the pain to climb to the top. Is he going to go for it? Rush going for the Dragon's Claw. No, the quickness of Apollo. The quickness of Apollo Cruz. Oh, what a rolling cutter. Apollo got this in the bag, but what is he doing? Oh, he's dragging him to the center of the ring looking for no excuses, but wait, what? What the? Oh, a modified STF. Look at the face of Apollo. He's desperate at this point. He's desperate to get on the board. Will he tap? Leo's trying to fight, stay in this fight. The referee's in fine position. Will he tap? Oh, Leo taps. Apollo sits at number one in Group B with 10 points. A few shenanigans here or there, but nothing can take away the fact that Apollo adapted and added to his arsenal. Superplex had, had them end up both in trouble, but that move right there, that's the move I'm talking about. He dug his knee in his spine and pulled back on his head and neck. Leo had no alternative but to tap out and give up and give up the 10 points to this to this pound for pound incredible athlete. And if he keeps going and if he keeps his pompous attitude in check, he could be a formidable, for formidable adversary for Big E Langston come Survivor Series. There it is official. He is currently at number one with 10 points. Still to come tonight, ladies and gentlemen, there you see the locker room of the bloodline. Before and before the night is over, we will hear a medical update for Rikishi after being tossed from the top of one of the, our production trucks back at WWE Ground Zero. Roman Reigns is here and he is not in a good mood. First lurking around corners like last week and this week alluding to the fact that we are crowning a new world television champion with Tommaso Ciampa being medically disqualified from competition. Whomever this investigator is needs to look no further than the rebellion since that's their MO. But we have to try to move on as 
another Survival Series match is moments away as Kofi Kingston looks to get on the scoreboard after failing to defeat Leo Rush during week one of the tournament. Ever since leaving the New Day as he is a former NXT and WWE Tag Team Champion, he has never held the top prize, but he needs to up his game if he wants to hang with someone who is arguably one of the best from bell to bell. And that man has this sold out crowd on their feet because they are ready to simply hype him up and simply burn it down. King Slayer, Beast Slayer, The Architect, so many names to describe Seth Rollins who currently has five points to his name after he readopted the pedigree to his arsenal. A move that was made famous by his former mentor and bitter rival Triple H, which believe it or not, smart strategy. Because to win a tournament this caliber, you have to bring out everything and then some. If you're new here, be sure to smash that like button and super kick that subscribe button as the road to Survivor Series continues to heat up. I have this I have this feeling in my midsection that this matchup will be memorable and if you share that sentiment let me know down in the live chat and the only thing that is left to be said as Seth Rollins makes his way to the ring as he continues to just soak in the adulation of the fans here in Birmingham England as the WWE alternative tour continues to just be off to a red hot start and we are far from done as the first match, we saw Shinsuke Nakamura gain additional five points at the unleashing on Ryder Strong. And we just saw Apollo Crews adapt a modified STF-like maneuver to gain 10 points and to be the leader. But will Seth Rollins tie with Apollo Crews as we are underway or as we get underway? And all that's left to be said is here we go as the bell just rung and the crowd here is ready and red hot. Just as the last time, Kofi is the fan favorite here as the sold out crowd, elbow and collar tie up as both men are in the ropes. The official is going to have to step in and break this one apart if they want to be clean and both of them have decided to go with the clean break here. Rollins is fired up. I'm fired up. Let's get this thing going. Elbow and collar tie up once again. Rollins jacking for position with that headlock. As Kofi is going to find a way to snap over, but no, he has him down on the mat. Oh, Kofi found a way to have him in his head, head locked. And no, Rollins ripped out, ripped out, trying to gain that position once again. And Kofi, oh, both of men are just not going to give up or not going to let down easily. No, Kofi, oh, now he has the arm, the previously injured arm. And now Kofi. In trouble once again with the headlock by Rollins back to where we started. And now Kofi bounces him off the rope. Ducks out, leaps over him, ducks out of the way. Oh, with the double stop. Right out of the gate, Kofi ain't playing games. He wants to get on the scoreboard. He does not want to be an afterthought. Oh, what a forearm. And now Kofi. Oh, he has him into the monkey flip. Kofi looking to put this one away. Here's the cover. Oh, only barely a one count. It wasn't even a one because the referee's hand did not even hit the mat. A side rushing leg sweep. Oh, whatever he had for Rollins had him well scouted. And now Rollins, Northern Light Suplex. Went for the pin, but his foot was in the rope. Smart strategy by the official to break that hold in the DDT by Seth Rollins. Oh, he has him into the Mishinoku driver looking to put this one away right here. Here's one, here's two, and three, no! Rollins got to do a lot more if he want to keep Kofi down. His sight says skills, and he got it, but he wasn't able to block that forearm. Rollins had him start over with a forearm into the corner. 
Going for another Mishinoku driver. Rollins again with another Mishinoku driver. That's the third one, but he's not going for the cover this time. He has him right in his sights with an elbow drop from the top. Shades of Shawn Michaels, Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, what a standing moonsault. Rollins has him in his sights, begging him to get to the top, get to his feet. He has him in his sights. Oh, he went for a blockbuster, but nobody home. Head scissors take down by Kofi. And Kofi has won every championship in the WWE except for the top prize. He is looking to do that if he can get, main, get on the scoreboard and up his chances. And speaking of up his chances, he went for a splash in the corner, but Rollins got out of the way. Sling blade. Sling blade by Rollins. Seth Rollins to the top. Oh, he's switching it up. Oh, what a beautiful moonsault. Looking to put this one away and gain five points to tie with Apollo Crews in, this, in Group B of the Survival Series Tournament. No. Only a two count. Rollins arguing with the official. You got to stay on him. You got to stay on him because Kofi has a lot more heart than you can think. Rollins, he's getting a little frustrated, but Kofi keep keeping up. He is in this fight still, and Rollins just now sees it. Rollins just now sees it. Kofi. Oh, and another double stop. Another double stop as Kofi. Proving to Rollins that he can hang with the best of them. What is he going for here? Oh, he's bringing him on. Rollins charging. Nobody home oh, with a double foot to the face. And now Kofi. Snap suplex. Float over to the cover. Looking to put this one away and gain five points. Two and three. No. Kofi looking a little gas. But he's going to fight through the pain if he wants to. Put himself on the scoreboard. Kofi going for a leg drop. Nobody home. Oh, he got him. He got him. He got him right here. Pedigree. Pedigree. It's over. It's over. It is over. Two. It's over for Kofi. What? What? How did Kofi kick out of the pedigree? Kofi kicked out of the pedigree. Rollins going to stay on him if he wants to. Nobody can't believe Kofi kicked out of the pedigree. Oh, what a power bomb. Rollins has him in his sights, embracing his inner title black with that Phoenix Splash. It's over. It's over. Seth Rollins to gain five points right there. No. What? How is Kofi staying in this fight? Rollins can't believe it. Oh, he was going for something. Probably another no like suplex, but another trouble in paradise. First time's the charm. Kofi looking to put this one away. Oh, but his hand was under the bottom rope. Smart strategy by Rollins. Kofi could not get the pinfall that way. Kofi. Oh, leaping. Oh, what unleashing on him. He is, I guess he is pissed off right now on the European uppercut. Kofi. Oh, with a knee to the side of the face. Oh, he was going for something, but, Co but Rollins dead lifting him with his weight. Oh, what a super kick to the midsection. Causing Kofi to collapse in the pain. Oh, what a back elbow. What a back elbow. Kofi is serious trouble right now. Both men will not let up. Rollins has him in his grasp. Superplex. He's not done. He's not done. Falcon Arrow. Rollins to gain five points right here. And three. No. Listen to this place. 
They are witnessing two incredible athletes pouring their heart and soul out for that dub. Oh, Joe Bay Suicida. This is just week one of the WWE Alternative Tour. My God. Rollins sending him back inside the inside of the ring. Seth is now in his comfort zone. He lays a focus on Kofi as he gets to his feet. Rollins hit. Oh, oh, oh no. It looked like his knee just buckled. It's no secret he has his history of a knee injuries, but Kofi taking advantage of this opportunity. I hope Seth is okay. Kofi. Elbow drop. The official's gonna step in and check on Rollins' knee as he's still clutching it. His knee did buckle after Kofi got out of the way. But Kofi is about to give him another reason to buckle with that. Boom, drop. Kofi. Rollins standing to his feet. Trouble in paradise. Trouble in paradise. Kofi looking to gain five points to get on the scoreboard. Three, no. What? What? What is going on? Neither man is letting up at Kofi. Oh, come on, Kofi. Don't let your frustrations get the better of you. Targeting that knee, that buckle. Rollins immediately got to the rope, forcing Kofi to break the hole. Kofi not letting up. Oh, and he plants him. He plants him, looking to put this one away and gain five points. Two and three. No. What the? What in the world? Pedigree, trouble in paradise. Neither man has no quit. Yeah, Kofi asking what I'm asking. What else can be done as this crowd is on their feet for what they are seeing? And we haven't even reached the main event yet. Kofi to the top. Reaching for something in the bag. Elbow dropping. Nobody home. Rollins quickly got out of the way. He's fighting through the pain with another sling blade. That knee has got to be bothering him. But that adrenaline has got to be feeding his passion to get enough some more points and we once again become WWE champion no Kofi got out of the way and a leaping lariat Rollins to the outside wait what is Kofi thinking Kofi Kofi trust fall on Rollins what the hell is going on let the bodies hit the floor We're at a stalemate now. Oh, both men striking. Both men got clocked. Rollins is rocked as Kofi sends him back inside the ring. Now, Kofi. Oh, got a drop kick, but he didn't get all of it. But he got enough to send Rollins to the outside. Possibly on instincts alone. Rollins to his feet. Kofi to the top. Roll for the... Oh, he barely got him. He barely got him, but Rollins just rocked on the barricade. Kofi sending himself back inside the ring. Kofi fighting through the mistake, but he has enough to connect with this trouble in paradise. Rollins is out. Kofi Kingston has just secured himself five points in the Survival Series Tournament. My God, what a war. This is where I thought it was over for Kofi. Rollins connected with a pedigree, but somehow, some way, Kofi was able to power out and keep himself alive in this match. Nothing can or will be taken away from Seth Rollins because he definitely brought his A game he is on a mission to wash that loss from set from Roman Reigns away the only way he knows how. But Kofi, it was just a little better on this night. And that right there, I thought this match was over Well, when we get to it. But as, as Rollins continues with that, oh, that he kicked out of that. I could not believe it. Tope Suicidas all over the place. I got a little ahead of myself. But this is right here where I thought the match was over well, as his knee buckled. It buckled away. But Kofi, oh, with the trust fall. But somehow Seth Rollins fought through the pain, but he wasn't able to fight the pain with that. That's a trouble in paradise. Got him back on the scoreboard. 
and put Seth Rollins away. Celebrate Kofi. Take a bow on this night. You prove to the world that people like you and me belong in this conversation of being one of the best at what they do. Kofi embraced the na hero nature and passion of the late Shaq Gaspar and made sure he got this dub. Seth Rollins looking at the hand. Kofi, respect. Both of you guys fought your hearts out and you both deserve this standing ovation. What a night. Earlier tonight, WWE Champion Rusev made his intentions known for Survivor Series, where the champion has to compete twice in one night to crown a WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But, a old foe made his way out to the ring in the form of former WWE Champion Samoa Joe, who lost the title after Rusev cashed in money in the bank. Straight to the point, Joe attacked Yes, he attacked the Batman of the Rebellion and made his intentions clear. As you can see, moments, oh, with that Samoan blitz. He made his intentions clear. He wants his rematch for the WWE Championship in a straight-up match, leaving the champion rocked as Joe stood over the championship. Well, Joe, your wish is about to come true as from the desk of the McMahon family in two weeks' time, emanated from Newcastle, England, the WWE Championship will be on the line as the Samoa submission machine, Samoa Joe, challenges the Bulgarian brute Rusev. Do you think Rusev can defeat Samoa Joe when he's at 100%? We'll find out in two weeks. Wait, wait a minute. Intercontinental Champion Drew McIntyre is out here. I know we were scheduled to hear from United States Champion Raymond Rowe, but the Scottish Terminator was not about to wait for the challenge. I rest my case, he wants Raymond Rowe out here to issue his little challenge. And of course, he's spoiling for a fight. I was correct, as I just mentioned, McIntyre saw the promos and was not about to wait around. He wants the War Raider to come out and issue his challenge to his face, and there he is, the reigning United States Champion, defeating Roderick Strong two months ago at WWE Ground Zero. Raymond Rowe is out here, but I'm curious myself, as to what the challenge will be. He left his wife Sarah and Hanson in the back. This is true, they are both workhorses of their respective brands, but there is no brands in, oh hell yeah! What? Yes! They want a war. The fans want a war. Hell, I want to, want to see this war. If the McMahons are listening, the challenge has been laid down. Both men want to be the undisputed workhorse of the WWE and Roe is willing to put his title on the line and McIntyre feels no different. One match, two champions, one undisputed intercontinental champion. The only thing that is left is to make it official.
Survivor Series is the night where everything changes, but what doesn't change is the fact that this is your main event of this broadcast, and it is another Survival Series tournament match. With this change in attitude and the addition of former world champion Jake Hager, Chris Jericho enters this match with the this overconfidence because he saw how easy Roderick Strong defeated Pete Dunne last week. But just to be clear, this was after Adam Cole shockingly returned to attack the Bruiser Wake with the last shot. Look at the stats of Jericho as of late. He defeated Bobby Roode via submission to qualify for this tournament with 10 points attached. But then he lost to Shinsuke Nakamura last week. And because of that, he acquired the services of Hager, formerly known as Jack Swagger. And believe it or not, this duo can and will be a dangerous entity with both former champions running roughshod over the WWE. And a victory tonight could possibly guarantee him a shot against the WWE champion. Can you imagine the possibility of Jericho versus Rusev or Jericho versus Samoa Joe? I can. And it could be crazy if that were to happen. But what's not crazy is the change that this man has un undergone in the past seven days. And there you see him. He doesn't want me to refer to him as simply the bruiser weight. After that crushing quick loss to Roderick Strong last week, this man allowed our cameras to follow him as he transformed from the bruiser to the bitter as he walked down that long hall. This is the first time anyone's seen him as he has isolated himself from his family and his friends because he felt that he had become soft and weak. And now as he entered this arena, who has been red hot all night, you can look into his eyes. That is the man who want, went on to become the longest reigning WWE United Kingdom Champion. And that is the man who took Johnny Gargano to the absolute limit when he won his third and final UK title back at WWE No Escape during the three stages of hell. And if, and if I'm the champion, I wouldn't take this man lightly with only two people, to my knowledge, kicking out of the bitter end. You know, you have to know that Pete brought more to this fight especially if he wants to defeat the first ever undisputed champion in WWE history and he as he has the home field advantage in his hometown as he was born just down the street in 93 and on this night he looks to be looks to be one of the biggest wins of his career over Chris Jericho but can he get it done with Jake Hager backing Y2J this crowd is jacked and ready for that bell to ring, so am I. And all that is left to be said is here we go. If Dunn wins by pinfall, he will tie with both Nakamura and Jericho. But if somehow he forces Chris to submit, he will be in the lead. Again, Jericho not taking this man serious as Pete is not budged one bit. Oh, what a first shot. Now he's not playing around. He is done playing games. He felt violated. He felt disrespected last week. Oh, went for a forearm, but Pete Dunn got out of the way. So he responded with a kick to the midsection. And now Pete has him down to a knee after that shot. And now he's wrenching at the face of Y2J. Oh, and a kick to the back of the head. Chris Jericho might be soon learning soon enough that you not want to underestimate. Oh, he gets out of the way. He get, finds a way to escape. I was about to say he, want, he will learn soon enough not to underestimate Pete Dunne. But Jericho found a way to get out of it because he is one of the absolute best in this ring. Oh, and a DDT. What a DDT by Le Champion. Chris Jericho sends him into the corner. Jericho, full speed ahead. Larry into the bulldog. I said Chris Jericho it was taking Pete Dunn light. He's about to make me eat my word with that discus lariat as he continues to unleash on the Ruzo way. Oh, 
throw repeated shots to the head of Pete Dunn. Jericho sends Dunn into the corner once more. Kick to the midsection. And now he has him in the sights. He's going from the middle rope into the sunset flip. I talked about Apollo Cruz's arrogance. Chris Jericho is just as bad, if not worse. But this is what we've come to expect from Le Champion. Yeah, he was going for something, and Pete Dunn responded, pushing him off with a forearm followed up. And Pete Dunn is done, at pun intended, with his games. Oh, what a shot to the spine! He has Jericho screaming in pain. And now Dunn. Oh, returning the favor with a hanging DDT. Oh, what a shot. Has a rock. And now Jericho in serious trouble. Oh, jeez. His head just snapped off the rope. Dunn sent them into the corner. Oh, what an insecurity to the arm. He has a tendency of nitpicking the body. Oh, now he's going into the triangle. The triangle. The triangle. Will Jericho tap? Will Jericho tap? Jericho is far from the rope. Oh, he has to power out. He has to power out. Deadlift into the power slam just to break the hole. It looks like he was targeting, looking to suck away the, the oxygen, float over into the neck breaker. Jericho put this one away. Two, and oh wait, Jake Hager, I didn't really notice. Jake Hager just tossed in a steel chair, which might be not smart because if Chris Jericho used that, he will be disqualified and lose three points. Oh. Oh, oh, and, a and a he just planted him on the back of his neck. And now Pete Dunn, like I said, he's just zoned out. He is done playing around. Oh, and another kick to the spine. Oh, kick to the mid section. What is he going for? Scoops him up. Going for like a, oh, wait, Jericho slips out. Oh, and he clips the knee. He just clipped the knee with a smart strategy because Dunn doesn't wear knee pads. Oh, and he's going to go right after it. You take that out. You take out a lot of firm base when it comes to him connecting with the bitter end. Jericho has him. Oh, and a kick to the face. And now Jericho. Oh. Oh. Claps him in. Oh, and he has him right where he wants him. I'm surprised the official doesn't ha have him break the hole as his face is in the ropes. But nevertheless, will Pete tap? Will he tap and give Jericho the heavy lead as he rolls through? Oh, and he float over into the DDT. Dunn has zoned out, shaving his beard, has converted him back to his ruthless nature as he sends Jericho crashing to the floor. The officials at the count of one, but that doesn't matter to Pete as he will. Oh, what a forearm. Sent him crashing, sent him make our death shift back just a little bit. And now Jericho sent crashing back into the ring. Pete Dunn. And at the top. Oh, what a forearm. What a forearm. And it looks like Chris Jericho has been busted wide open. Oh, kick to the mid section. Pete, Pete, Pete. Exploder suplex. Looking to put this one away. Oh, his feet was in the bottom rope. And of course, Jake Hager. Hager has found his way to get to the top and distract the official. Oh, Hager four by Dunn. I've been saying this. Pete Dunn has finished playing around. And Jake Hager is not about to, oh, he blocked the forearm. He's probably going for the bitter end. But Jericho responded with an insecurity. Oh, wait. Jericho, Jericho folds him over into the Lion Tamer. The Lion Tamer 
Will Dunn tap? He's far from the ropes. Will he tap? Will he give Jericho 10 points and put him in 20 point lead of the scoreboard? Oh, he rolls through. Oh, and he gets free. Pete fighting through the pain. I told you. You think I'm just bullsh mm. You. <laughs> I caught myself. I got hype. It is what it is. As J Dunn repeated with that kick. No, go for the bitter end. No, dip. No, oh, sends him crashing to the floor. Jericho. Oh, sidestepped him. Done. That sidestepped him. And now he's about to make him meet the mat again. Dropping him on his neck. This match has gotten absolute crazy. Jake Hager is pissed off that Dunn hit him, but Jericho is not quick to take advantage of the, the distraction because he's been through a world of hurt, courtesy of Pete Dunn. Oh, kip up Jericho. Had him well scout. He was toying with him and he sends him crashing to the mat. Oh, what a what a shoulder tackle. And another. Jericho bouncing off the ropes. Dunn sends him to the outside. Jericho catches his balance. Jericho to the top. Looking for the double axe. No! Pete Dunn caught him. He caught him with a shot to the midsection. Oh, kick to the midsection again. Exploder suplex. Look at the eyes. He's raged. He is raging out. He is back grizzled and bitter and speaking of bitter bitter end Dunn normally goes for the pin but I've said it before he has become something different and Chris Jericho has made the mistake of underestimating the bitter triangle triangle the triangle choke is locked in the triangle choke is locked in Jericho is fading he's losing blood and consciousness will he tap Oh, he taps! He taps! This changes everything! Pete Dunne is now in the lead for the Group A of Survival Series. The hometown boy has placed himself in the lead as he fought his heart out to the escape. This lion tamer, and for every move that Chris Jericho threw at him, he fought, he fought, he fought. Dunne found a way to fight out of it and hit him harder. Dunn took that loss last week and changed his mentality. And with this win, he has placed himself as a strong front man to face the WWE Champion Survival Series. And that was how it came to, the, to a bitter end, or at least the prelude that exploded suplex. And this right here, the bitter end. But he didn't go for the pin. He went for that triangle choke. He choked out Jericho and gave him no other choice but to tap out. Pete Dunn now sits at the top of Group A with 15 points. And if he keeps this mindset permanently, guaranteed he will be a strong favorite to leave as the winner of Group A. And he could leave London, England as the WWE World Heavyweight Champ. What the hell? Oh, Jake Kager spoiling the celebration. Come on, man. Oh, no, 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 no. Same as Nakamura last week with the gut wrench power bomb. Yo, man, lost Hager. Take him to the back, regroup, and try again. Disgusting. Disgusting, man. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate is coming to the aid of his British strong style brother in arms, and he's taking the fight to the big man. The Dudley native unleashing on Jake Hager as Jake Hager is not off his feet. It looks like these shots are doing nothing but pissing him off. What a drop kick, and it looks like he's pissing him off. But that lariat, what a lariat, send him crashing to the outside. The big strong boy strikes again. The last time these two saw each other was back at No Escape where Pete Dunne wanted to go out on his own and reclaim the respect of the fans. 
Wait, I can't tell if he was grateful or not, but that's the new norm for Pete Dunne. He's all for himself, and he does not want any more handouts. He wants to do everything. Oh, wait, what? Oh, what the heck? Stone Cold. Stone Cold is here. Is he? Is he the investigator that Mr. McMahon had picked to look into the Tommaso Ciampa situation? Is he heading out here? Oh, yeah! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! The t-shirt says it all. Arrive, raise hell, leave. Former Raw General Manager Stone Cold Steve Austin is here and I was yep I was just informed in my headset that he is the investigator hired by Mr. McMahon and the board of directors to dot every I and cross every T in this situation because the superstars were already on edge with the rebellion raising hell for months and we need to know if it's them again or if there is a copycat this crowd can't believe what they are seeing. Neither can I. The Hall of Famer, former WWE Champion, is back. And he is ready to investigate this situation. This is great. Oh, Chris Jericho still at ringside recovering from his loss. You damn right. No nonsense. Yeah, new new world television champion will be named. Oh, at Survivor Series in a mini gauntlet match and the last man standing will be the WWE World Television Champion, which will be a great idea. And oh wait. Chris Jericho coming to. <laughs> Chris, Chris Jericho could be a prime suspect. He did. He was scheduled to face him last week. And of course, Chris Jericho wants to rub in the face that he defeated Stone Cold all those years ago to become undisputed champion. Stone Cold doesn't really care about that, but he has promised that he will uncover the truth and probably some secrets along the way. I just can't believe Stone Cold is here. And Stone Cold letting Chris Jericho know how he feels and has just informed the WWE fans and that locker room that he will find out the truth. Who? Who did it? Who took out Tommaso Ciampa? Now I can confirm, ladies and gentlemen, the line of matches set for next week live from Manchester, England as the alternative tour continues where we will see only Group B competing as the architect Seth Rollins will go one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever against the man of the hour, Leo Rush. After the loss both men suffer tonight, how will they bounce back next week? Also in Group B, we will see the globally elite athlete Apollo Crews go one-on-one -on -one with Kofi Kingston, who in my opinion had one of the best matches of his career, but also next week. In a rarity, we will see the sergeant in arms of the rebellion, Alistair Black, in action. And now it's confirmed that it will be against the man we just saw return, the big strong boy and former UK champion, Tyler Bate. Will Black be able to gain the momentum heading into the Survivor Series? And speaking of the tra Thanksgiving tradition, I've just received word that next week we will determine who will challenge Oscar for the WWE Women's Championship when we host an eight-woman over-the-top rope battle royal. Next week's show is stacked. Now it is time for the moment of truth. Accompanied to the ring by WWE Tag Team Champions and his cousins, Roman Reigns is here as he leads the bloodline to the ring as we await for the major update on the man who has led them to success and one of the patriots of the Anoa family, Rikishi, who was viciously taken out two months ago when he was thrown off the production truck by none other than the legendary phenom, The Undertaker.
Now I don't condone the actions of the dead man, but however, the bloodline are no saints. They've done their fair share of despicable deeds, but no one, and I mean no one, deserves what happened to Rikishi, and their demeanor gives off the notion that it might be bad news. I am hoping for the former of it being good news and not the latter of it being la bad news as this crowd is somewhat behind the bloodline and it's become known that once we reach international territory that has become a normal Roman entering the ring on his own I'm guessing he was tasked with delivering the news all by his low son. I guess that is somewhat good news. He was not paralyzed when he took that fall. Uh oh. Bringing up the fact that his career started at Survival Series and at WrestleMania that he almost took him out indefinitely after his match with Braun Strowman, that being the Undertaker. But where is he going with this? Oh no. Holy sh**! Roman Reigns wants The Undertaker at Survivor Series inside hell in a cell. Will the dead man accept the challenge?